Welcome back, folks. This is the last teaching lecture on the Inner Circle Trader YouTube channel. Before I get into this one, just to let you know that uh, this is one of the closest viewpoints to how I actually trade. Now, when I say that, don't gloss over it thinking, well, you know, that's all well and good. What, is, what does that mean? It means that you have to understand all the PD arrays. You have to be familiar with them because what you may or may not realize is a market maker model is relying on your understanding of every PD array I've made available. So if you're looking at price, you're going to see things in price that are going to be salient to your understanding. If you don't know what a breaker is, if you don't know what a mitigation block is, if you don't know what a inversion fair value gap is, the observation of seeing it real time as a market maker buy or sell model may escape you at the time when you're looking at price action live. So one of the things I've seen throughout teaching this is that some of my students can see a market maker model really, really quick. And it's because they have been familiar with a multitude of PD arrays, not just simply an order block or a breaker. So they, they can see things and have a better understanding about price action. And that's what I mean by graduating in your understanding and not rushing this. So while this is the last model I'm teaching publicly, uh, the, I guess the, the disclaimer going in should be that this is going to be very difficult for a lot of you. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, when I taught my private mentorship students, I told them that you know, these are things that are going to require you to know all the things that I taught in mentorship. There's going to be multitudes of market maker sell and buy models that are going to escape you. You won't see them until after the fact. But don't discount that as wasted opportunity. Log them, journal them, mark them up. Okay, and then annotate them in a way where it looks like you've seen it coming and journal it just like that. So that way when you look at your journal, it'll be in your own words that you saw it coming. It's all pseudo experience. It's it's conditioning your brain to see it as a positive thing. So that way when you see it again, it's a rewarding experience. And your subconscious is not trying to distract you from a painful experience. Whereas if you don't journal and you only have bad experiences by trying to trade with real money or try to do something where incurred risk is real versus trying to read price action and there's no monetary risk or gain. There's no ego, there's no pride, there's no pain. All these things are going to help getting you closer to understanding a market maker model. But for the sake of brevity, everything I disclose in this teaching, just reverse it for a market maker buy model. Okay, because I'm going to focus primarily on a market maker sell model. Everything here is shown in reverse if you are applying it to a market maker buy model. Now I do have lectures and teachings on this in the YouTube channel. So this isn't meant to be a be all end all. I'm leaning on the assumptions that you have already studied a lot of the things I'm going to talk about. So if this is one of the first videos you've ever watched by me, or if you're a relatively new student, this is probably going to go over your head. And that's a normal thing. Okay. It's, it would be considered a little advanced. And, and that's why I'm saying it, it's, it's the closest thing to how I internalize price action when I'm engaging it. So 99% of the time when I'm taking a trade, it's usually something like this. That's the framework behind it. Okay. And I may or may not have the time or interest even to disclose the model that I'm actually trading inside of. That would be the market maker buy or sell model. But when you look at it, Conceptually, you can fragmentize these price swings and make one segment of the market maker model, whether it be a buy or sell model, and that in itself may be your unique model that you trade. Not that you're trying to trade the bottom of a market maker buy model to the top or vice versa for a sell. You know, it, it's a matter of preference what you want to do because there's a buy and sell curve, buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve. And we'll discuss that in here now. But uh, this teaching is my market maker models. It's algorithmic price delivery and institutional price swings. 
All right, so I guess in a lot of ways, this is just basically my interpretation and in creating a language around swing trading. Now, when I say swing trading, what I'm referring to is if I'm bullish, I'm trading from discount to premium, riding the coattails of buy side delivery. If I'm bearish, I'm trading from premium to discount, riding the coattails of sell side delivery. Now, when I mention buy side and sell side, you're thinking liquidity. And I'm going to draw a distinction between the liquidity and the delivery. All right, so imagine, if you will, that you were looking at price in those relative equal highs right here that we're looking at conceptually. Uh, we would anticipate a run above that. Now, if you can get that far in your understanding from what I've taught, you have the beginning building blocks of understanding how to look for a market maker sell model. But I want to flesh this out a little bit because it's not just simply understanding where relative equal highs and relative equal lows are. You have to understand what the market's trying to do and gravitate to. And for the premise of doing it to go higher, longer term, or to go up just to trick people into being long and then going lower longer term. That's narrative. So that's going to be outside the scope of this teaching. So again, it's going to be very frustrating for you if you think this is going to be like a really elementary model, like the silver bullet, which is relatively simple, or model 2022, which is relatively simple. Uh, this one's going to have a whole lot of talking in it because I'm reminding you of the things that are going to be supportive for you to understand how to trade these things. If you're trying to trade like me, you're going to have to learn to do what I'm talking about here. If you're not inspired to try to trade like me and you just want to trade a silver bullet or a model 2022 and that's all that you're interested in and you're content with being successful with that, wonderful. You do not need to have this level of understanding. It is helpful to try to look at price action every day, every week, every month and go through and see if you can find these types of models in price action and by collecting them you'll have a better understanding of what they look like in the future because you've seen lots of examples of it that you've ferreted out of price action not me pointing to it or someone else pointing to it after the fact you want to be able to do this on your own but for the sake of this discussion uh, the understanding is you know, we should be able to see those relative equal highs and that being this here in this here. Now I'm I'm using a a close line chart. So it's going to be a rather crude depiction of a general idea. Okay, we'll, we'll transition to actual charts in a moment, but for now, I want you to just think conceptually how if the market's going to run eventually up above that and if we could hold a bearish stance, meaning that we look at every rally as a suspect rally if we're bearish and then we're going to be looking for some measure of reversal and then once that reversal is qualified that meets the criteria for a market maker sell model then we can go in and engage it now an advanced interpretation of this would be anticipating the run above these relative equal highs here and being long prior to it and the most advanced form of it would be to buy it during the buy side of the curve and then short it during the sell side of the curve. That is very advanced. And I, while I do have students that can do that like me, not many of them can. They can either trade the long side of the buy side of the curve or they can sell short on the sell side of the curve. So it's a matter of them picking what they can see clearly based on their present understanding and their experience. And don't try to rush it. Don't try to keep up with me. Don't try to keep up with my other students that are doing well. It's at your own pace that you learn this. That's the best pace to learn it at. So don't try to feel like you're you're behind or you're trying to catch up with the class because I have students that go back to 1996. So it, you're never gonna catch up with them. So I want you to take a look at that price movement here if this is a market that you'd be trading or interested in learning. Uh, these ideas are universal, so it's not a matter of it only applies to futures or it only applies to index futures or Forex. It's, it's universal. 
Okay, so as long as there's a price feed attached to it and it can be traded, these conceptual ideas can be applied to it, okay? This whole idea from this run up to that level there, this is what I refer to as buy side delivery. Okay, so when price is running higher, it's offering buy side. It's giving the marketplace buy side as it's running higher. Now, for the purposes of running above this high and this high, it's running up to engage the liquidity that would be resting above these relative equal highs. So the distinction here is the directional movement when it's going higher, prices in a buy side delivery. Liquidity above a single or a group of highs, that is buy side liquidity. That's orders that are pending, whether to be a buyer to break out and go long or to protect a short position. So liquidity is a stagnant price level or levels where stops would reside. Buy side delivery is the actual animated movement of price moving higher. And as you probably would have guessed, when we're looking at price going lower, this here is what I refer to as sell side delivery. So the express purposes of running above these relative equal highs, that function has been performed. So now price could, if we're bearish, move lower and then trade back below the previous rally low. So it's buy side delivery to the upside to engage liquidity, trap traders long, and smart money would go short here and write it back down to stop out any individuals that were lucky enough to be long in this but kept a stop loss here or inside this run up during the buy side delivery, their stop loss would be tagged out. And again, with the premise of reaching for the new engineered sell side liquidity, which would be the sell stops on longs that anyone would have been going long here, their stop loss would be priced right below here. So it's the rally up to take buy side and then rip right back down to take the sell side on those individuals that were trying to go long and weren't astute enough to reverse or at the very minimum close out in a profitable position. Now, as I promised, we're going to look at it through the lens of open, high, low, close candlesticks. So take a couple minutes, look at this before I continue pause the video before i start talking and make observations about what you think you see here what's salient to you and when you're ready unpause the video all right so what we're looking at here is basically the same idea of price action instead of a line close chart where every fluctuation is only noted by where the interval will be utilizing that closing price only not the highest high and the lowest load but the closing price here we're looking at the highest high and lowest low and the open and close of every individual candlestick of this respective time frame. So we see the relative equal highs here with this high and this high here. And the, mount, the market rallies up here. So all of this is the buy side delivery and the subsequent sell side delivery, attacking the sell side that was created after the run higher. And this run higher attacks the relative equal highs here where liquidity is. So markets go up for two primary reasons. One, it goes up to engage buy stops, which is buy side liquidity, or it goes up to an inefficiency. What is that? Well, if you look right here, that's an inefficiency. We have this small little segment of price action where the previous candles low stops here. The next candle opens, trades up a little bit, goes lower the next candle we open trade up stop here and then we move lower this separation between these three candles here one candle in the middle this is what i call a fair value gap it's a very specific price level that we look for and it's one of the most visual things that you can see from my repertoire and the things i teach your eye should jump right to it when you see it and in this case if you've missed it you can see clearly now it's highlighted so because it's a down close candle, what kind of inefficiency is it? A fair value gap classified as a SIBI, S-I-B-I, 
sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Meaning, when these form, the market's algorithm that produces the fluctuations in price, not because it's buying and selling pressure, but the market rallies to these predetermined levels because it has to offer what? Here, this one single candle went lower. So what does it need to do if it's going to be an efficient market? It needs to trade up back in between these two price points. This candle's low, this candle's high. We see that here. This candle trades up to it, but where does the close stop? Right at the high of it. The next candle, we open and we trade back down. Yes, there was a small wick here. Yes, there was a small little wick here. That is acceptable. That's permissible. But the bodies tell us the narrative. So all of this rally up here was under the pretense that we would see it just simply trade back to this little area here. Above the buy side. Above this high and this high. So ICT, how far can it go above these relative equal highs? You'd have to look to see if there's any close proximity inefficiencies. In this case, we have one right here. Notice this candle's tail goes way lower. Then we open, trade back up, making the low of the fair value gap. And then we trade here, lower. Then we next candle, we open, went lower. So all of these three candles here, we've had a lot of back and forth price action. There's no fair value gap here. We can clearly see there's a gap because there's only one candle making that defined range of that low of that candle and that candle's high. So that small little area here is a fair value gap. The algorithm will go back to that and reprice to it. How? By going back up to it and offering a patch, filling in this only one singular down close candle. Now we have an up close candle laying directly right over top of it. So it patches over the inefficiency here in price. So right away, you can see while this discussion is primarily market maker models, to understand what my market maker model is, you have to understand a plethora of other supporting studies. So while it may be one of those things that you're all going to try to gravitate to over time, just understand it's going to take a lot of time to understand the, the full magnitude of what's available in terms of deciphering and reading price. It's not just simply, here is a time of day, here is a fair value gap, and where's the draw on liquidity? When you're using a market maker sell and buy model, you're looking at multiple draws on liquidity, and you have to be more nimble. So I'm saying this not to discourage you, but to remind you that it's going to take a whole lot more effort than you probably realize going into this. I've made available very, very simple, straightforward elementary models using the concepts I've created. So if you get discouraged after this, just know that you can always revert back to the silver bullet or the 2022 or optimal trade entry models. They're very simple. So let's go into greater detail here, how the market ran up into this area here and focus on how it went down, not just simply below the sell side of that original rally up, but it went down to this old low right here. Look real close, you'll see that it went just below that. That's not random. This right here is a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. It's the opposite of this singular candle here. It's an up close candle. So it wouldn't be a SIBI, it would be a BISI, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So it digs into this just by a little bit, but specifically right below that low. Again, that's not random. These are things that I like to look for. You can also see how we have that same thing occurring here. This is a buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency. Again, the opposite of this. Up close candles that create a fair value gap or inefficiency is referred to as a BISI. The classification by PD array is fair value gap, but it's an up close candle. So it's a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, meaning the price will want to go back down to it eventually. And in here, we have that imbalance, and it trades where? Down. Once it gets into there, it reprices to the order block, then it rallies back up, creating the initial stage of what? A shift in market structure above this high here. So now we can look for a retracement back down in. So is, as it's retracing, we're anticipating the price doing what? Eventually reaching for the high here and here. So we can look for a lower time frame 
to give us a scenario where if we think it's going to go above these relative equal highs and we can see that this fair value gap wasn't hiding, it's in plain view. It should stand out on your chart. That's why it, you're encouraged by me to annotate them when you see them. So if you see a draw on liquidity that's setting up above or below the marketplace, don't just limit your focus to that. Look in close proximity just above these buy side liquidity highs here that are relatively equal. How far can it go above it? Well, looking over here, there's no inefficiency here, but there is one right there. So how far can it go above these relative equal highs? There. And look where the body stop. Okay, so that's not random. All right, so we're going to zoom in here a little bit. Drop down into a lower time frame chart here. And don't worry, I'll let you know what this is as we get to the close of the lecture. But just stick to what I'm showing you here. We have the low buy side delivery trading up into the fair value gap that was on a time frame that was 60 minutes, but now we're on a 15 minute. So this time frame here is a 15 minute time frame. It's one quarter of what was shown as the previous chart. So there's four times the number of candles. And I've given you a reference point that it was based on a 60 minute or hourly fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. And still you can see the bodies respecting and only the candlesticks wicks are piercing it. See that? So that's very, very indicative of qualifying the fact that we went up to a specific level and therefore we can trust that the algorithm is kind of like broadcasting to those that know how to look at it and see it that it's likely to now reprice lower. Reprice to where? Below this low. And any accelerated run below this low, how far can it go? Is there any inefficiencies over here? Don't look at this one because that's above that low. We would already be anticipating a retracement back below that. Where will we look? The rejection block, which is the lowest down close. And then we have these relative equal lows here. And you can see it just goes a little bit below that low right there. We're going to get into this in a moment. For now, just notice that we have ran above that buy side, that old high here, that old high here. Shift in market structure on the hourly chart above this high here. So it's retracing. What's it retracing back down into? The fair value gap. Order block. Right there. So now, does the market offer a consolidation? That's what we would be expecting here. Is it consolidating? Is it offering a small little pause in price where it goes sideways for a little while, which would be accumulating long positions? That's allowing smart money to accumulate longs. I'm going to zoom in. This is the same time frame, okay? So it's 15 minute. Here's that low. You can see how we just went below it right here. See that? Here's that low inside the fair value gap with the order block, which is a down close candle. Again, we would be anticipating some measure of consolidation, not dropping lower, consolidation. Because that means we would be anticipating a run above the buy side here and the previous high that's to the left outside the scope of what I'm zoomed in on now, but you can see it's still being highlighted. And then that 60 minute fair value gap in the form of a sell side and bounce buy side efficiency, that's here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down to an even lower time frame and see if there's any more detail in here with a five minute chart. So now we're inside of a lower time frame, five minute chart, and I've highlighted now this little area right down here. And I told you we would talk about that. In here, we're looking at a balanced price range. A balanced price range is where the market has both a downside and upside or sell side delivery and buy side delivery that overlap one another in the same relative range in price. So you can see how this candle's high, that candle's low. That would normally be what? A sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. But look what's happened over here. We have a high, a big up close candle and this candle is low. So what does that make this? A buy side and balance, sell side efficiency. So there's an overlapping between 
a SIBI and a BISI within the general area of the same price range. So I'm using the low here and the high here. So that way we can see how this becomes a balanced price range. These are trapped traders. Okay. This in here is a trap trader or trap traders that would have been caught short. In the classic days of commodity trading, if you were to see old patterns like what would be considered an island reversal, okay, uh, this is the closest thing that I can kind of use to describe what's occurring when there is a balanced price range when it's extreme like this. So when we have a big decline, large range candle that's down and then eventually not like months later, not weeks later, but when it's a big drop and a handful of candlesticks like this, it's not a whole lot of candles and eventually, you know, rip back higher. That means that this was someone that's been caught. They're short and they quickly reprice and leave them down there. So when I see that, I look to see where those two reference points are, where the market drops quickly for sell side delivery. And then when it rallies back up, quickly those one big candles down one big candles up all the price action below it i would view that as trap traders so that means by itself that gives me narrative that it's probably going to go higher so now cue up the idea of what would it be reaching for well we see it was dropping back down into an inefficiency here the buy side here and the old high back to the left and that 60 minute Fair value gap, that's a SIBI up here. We're still in a 15 minute time frame, by the way. I'm, I miscued it earlier, I'm calling it a five minute. See, the idea of the market consolidating, that's what we're showing here. Now, how am I referencing this consolidation? This is the part of it that becomes like a knack, okay? Um, you might not have the exact candles framed like this when you see an original consolidation. So when I call a original consolidation, that is where the market is accumulating. So what I did here, I, I, I seen these two candles here and then the body of this one and the body of this one. So right away, my eye jumps to that because it's what? It's a smooth edge. So I want to use that as the high of the original consolidation. What's the low? The lowest low. See how easy that was? So when I'm looking at the original consolidations, I'm looking for a repetitive overlapping or reoccurrence of a level that's being constantly referred back to inside of a consolidation. Now I'm anticipating the market to go higher, to go above the buy side here and then reach up into this inefficiency up here. But I'm anticipating also that it should offer some measure of consolidation because if it's going to do that, my premise behind swing trading is it's all on the basis of a market maker sell model or a market maker buy model. That's what swing trading is. Whether you realize it or not, whether you want to subscribe to it or not, that's what the market's doing. It's not doing harmonic stuff. It's not doing late wave stuff. It's moving on the principles of running to liquidity or it's running to inefficiencies. And if it's not doing that, it's consolidating. And if it's not doing that, it's highly manipulated. And then you're having some kind of manual intervention, some kind of shock and awe, surprise rate announcement, some kind of wartime event, something that would destabilize the marketplace that you can't and I can't predict before it happens, okay? So that's always the un underlying incurred risk that we have as speculators. So this area here is where I'm framing that. You can see still, look how many times it's referring to that same level that's based over here. So when I'm looking at consolidations, I'm looking at levels that constantly repeat. I'm not just going to lay it over top of this high or this high or this high. I'm looking for something that frames it very clearly. Now, when you go back and look at my examples when I'm doing this in the past, and I've been doing it for a long, long time since the 90s, but the examples I've made public, look and see how I'm drawing your attention to these specific consolidations. Do you see it? Do you see it as a consolidation? Go back and look at your other annotations that maybe you have journaled before. Start looking at it like this. So that way when you understand it, when the market does eventually leave the original consolidation because we're underlyingly bullish, we have traders that are trapped down here. They don't want to drop down below to give them an opportunity to get out. Even though the market does eventually drop lower here, they may not come back down into this area until a later time. It could be weeks, it could be days, it could be hours, it could be you know a, a time that's unknown to you. That's outside the scope of the 
the presentation here. What you're looking for, what I'm looking for, is trades that make sense where the market's reaching for liquidity inefficiencies and then reversing for the sake of going back against the original consolidation where people are going to see this as a support level. And I don't trade support resistance. I attack support resistance. I attack liquidity above old highs. I attack liquidity below old lows. And I use inefficiencies as targets or means of entry to trade against those same ideas, which would be anti-retail theory. I'm against it. I'm opposed to retail theory. Anything retail. If it's support resistance, harmonic patterns, Elliott Wave, GAN, Wyckoff, all that stuff. That's all retail logic. And my understanding is that's the reason why that 90% people that try to use all that stuff fail. And they, and they fail rather quickly. So when we can frame the original consolidation properly, then once we leave it, how, do we, how are we leaving it here? Look at the body right there. Yeah, we had a wick here. We had a wick right there too. But look at the body staying inside that original consolidation. See that? That's characteristic to algorithmic price delivery. It's indicating to individuals that I'm trying to show you that this is the language that traders that use this information and the algorithms, the high frequency trading algorithms, they highlight these things in price. And so it gets their high frequency trading algorithm in the hunt for long entries. When is it allowed to take the long? That candle right there tells you. So now we can then refer back to the same level here. If it trades back to that level, what's it doing? It's returning back to the original consolidation. That's how I teach my market maker and sell model and buy model. The original consolidation, it can leave it. It doesn't have to touch it, but if it does, that's usually a trade. So this would be your, your original entry. Okay, so you could go long there, but sometimes it won't offer a return back to the original consolidation. So it might just need a higher order entry and not offer something right at the high of the original consolidation. The market rallies up, trades right into that 60 minute fair value gap, SIBI. Bodies tell a narrative. It's not interesting going any higher. Why? Because look at this big candle drop down there. Wonderful. We have an inefficiency here. We have an inefficiency here. Drops aggressively below the original consolidation. Right back to the high of the balance price range. Right there. Which is also just below that old low right there that make these relative equal lows what? Suspect for sell side. So sell side liquidity resting below there, that's the draw. If it's gonna go well beyond the low here where the original consolidation sell side liquidity would be resting. So in, in layman's terms, what we're saying is it's building up a lot of interest to go higher. Then it rips higher, comes back down, gives one more chance, okay, one more chance then takes off, takes above this high here, then reaches up into the inefficiency. Then at that point, does it indicate that it wants to go lower? Because if you're bearish and you're extremely bearish to the degree where you think this is a good entry point, you could sell up here as it does that. And that's a little scary. I understand that. But eventually you get these multiple entries in here where you can go short. We'll look at them in greater detail in a minute. But eventually the idea was to draw back down into this area here. But if it goes below this, how far can it go? There's no inefficiency over here. It's these relative equal lows. And that's where the market drops to. All right, so now we have more candlesticks. And now this is the five minute chart. So here's the original consolidation. You see the market does, in fact, drop back down in. Inversion fair value gap. I don't have it highlighted because it would be too many things on the chart. But for you, that's inversion fair value gap, meaning that Usually that would be sell side and balance buy side efficiency. If the market trades back up into it, we would see it what trade lower. But if it's an inversion fair value gap, it means it's going to go above it, come back down, and use it as a discount array. And it's inside of the original consolidation and rallies. Takes the buy side, trades the 60 minute fair value gap, SIBI. Even in the five minute, look at the candlesticks. The bodies are inside that SIBI. It's indicating that, yes, there's wicks going on in here, but that's just. The, the, the damage, okay, where it's reaching for the best case for smart money to get short against. 
and then we see it drop lower. Zoomed in on that five minute chart. Here we have the original consolidation, the rally up, and I want you to pause the video again. And if you're not doing this, I promise you, you're, you're really not getting the same measure of understanding and the opportunity to see it in your own eyes and test your observations. Now, you might not get it right, but that's okay. Trying and attempting to do it and seeing things with detail, you might not have it exactly right, but what happens if you do have the things I'm going to point out? It's encouraging. So don't rob yourself the opportunity to have that. So pause the video, take a look at all the price run from here up to here, and then down. What do you see? All right, if you haven't paused the video and want to, you better have it paused because I'm about to continue. When you're looking at this, my eye sees this. Return to the original consolidation. The market rallies up. We have a down close candle that's just below this area right here. What does this up close candle become? Bullish breaker. Low. High, lower low, down close candle, inside of the breaker, candle over here, that's a bullish order block right there. So when it rallies up and trades back down in, our target is what? Up here. The initial draw is the liquidity above that high and the older high to the left. It's not inside this fractal price action anymore, but it's highlighted with this line. So this drop down, that could be, if you're not seeing the original consolidation correctly and this would be your original entry or uh, your first stage accumulation and then this would be second stage reaccumulation here and it rallies up but if you don't for the sake of those individuals that wouldn't have it identified correctly in terms of how big the original consolidation is when it leaves it and it comes back down in i'm making an allowance for that for this lecture here so you you might not have that skill set in the beginning to see exactly how to define the consolidation then if that's the case then the bullish order block here would be your first stage accumulation for you is it wrong to classify it this way no it's based on your understanding they're both correct based on the level of experience and knowing what you're doing the only distinction is is how you may or may not have had the original consolidation mapped out right so many of you may not have seen this as a return to the original consolidation. You may have seen this as relative equal highs being taken, and now it's going to go lower, not knowing all the other narrative that I've outlined here. So down close candle here in the scope of bullish price run during buy side delivery, aiming for this area up in here. The down close candle is traded to here. So there's your entry for a first stage accumulation or it would be second stage reaccumulation if you use this as your first entry so again just make sure you understand that sometimes you will only have one point of accumulation and not have a return to original consolidation it might just rip higher give you one opportunity to go in and then run real quick to it then and then after that bleed lower so it has a lot of different variances to it again which is why i said that you have to understand everything that i teach to be able to be well versed with trading market maker models that doesn't mean that you can't see a very generic plain as day obvious market maker sell or market maker buy model when it's in the price action and it's obvious it's real easy to see it but the potential for more of them to be there and in, in your fingertips to be able to reach and see, I can see more setups now, uh, that's going to increase over time. Okay, so just understand that. So what have I said here so far? Well, you have an opportunity to be a long entry here or a long entry there. So there's two setups. Which one of these, without going any further so far, which one of these would make sense for you as a trader right now with your present understanding? Obviously, it's a rhetorical question because I, I, I can't obviously get the response from you here. But... I want you to think about that because I have some traders that would only be interested in taking this as their entry. And if they never get a return to the original consolidation, they're not long. Others 
want to see that, then it rallies, and in the next buying opportunity, as long as we don't get to the target up here, they're willing to take this as the first stage accumulation, and that's their entry. And then they ride it up into that target. They may or may not have the ability or interest in trying to go short at that time. Other traders can identify this as the first stage accumulation, maybe not see this one down here, and they see this and they want to wait to see if price rallies up to that point. Then they use this part as their model where they go short and they pyramid in here, here, and wait for the run below here. And don't even consider something like down here. Is that wrong? No. I have other students that want to see it do this, then really prove it wants to go lower, and then they'll trade that one right there. And then go into that. That's a unicorn. Okay, unicorn is second stage redistribution and a sell model, market maker sell model. Now, when I say unicorn, <laughs> meaning everything's in your favor, you got everything behind you. It's just, just so it's so one sided, and you can see it. It's usually the most energetic um, swing high that it drops down from. If you've classified everything correctly and everything to the left on the buy side of the curve is identified correctly and you have everything labeled right and you have time and price in agreement with you, chances are you're, you're probably going to ride the lightning, which is really quick, sudden drops, and it's real fun to be in those low resistance liquidity runs. But that's one of the most qualifying factors in my trading and how I teach it to my students is to find the easiest, high speed, low resistance liquidity runs. They're going to always be the second stage redistribution in a market maker sell model, which is what this is right here. Okay. So if you miss this one, this is also what I teach, which is a buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency, consequent encouragement, which is the midpoint of this inefficiency. Did it get to this level up here yet? Nope. So this here is a bullish fair value gap, consequent encouragement, second stage reaccumulation right there. Now, for some of you, you might be going long in here and then adding and pyramiding to that to ride into this level here. That might be your trade. Is there anything wrong with that? Nope. Absolutely not. Others that are high, high end students that have been doing it for a long time, they're going to sell these Mohawks because the bodies are already indicating that what? It's not one to go outside of that 60 minute fair value gap, SIBI. So every rally up here, they're going to go short. And anything outside of that PD array is high, which is the 60-minute fair value gap. That's an extreme, extremely overbought, without an indicator, entry. And you've seen me do that in my executions. You've seen me do that with my pyramid entries. You've watched me trade just outside of the fair value gaps when I'm bearish or bullish. And it becomes the usually within a tick or two from the actual highest high or lowest low of those individual candlesticks. And then it starts running the direction I need to go. This is what I refer to as a smart money reversal. You are years away from ever being able to do that consistently. I promise you that's not me trying to talk down to you. It takes a great deal of understanding of knowing what it is that we're trying to do here because essentially what you're doing is you're picking the tops in bearish markets. Now, did you hear what I just said? We're picking the tops in bearish markets. I'm not afraid of that. I don't try to discourage that of my students, but I do absolutely discourage that in my own trading when it's a bull market. I'm not trying to pick the top because they're always going to go well beyond what I think and what you think it's going to do. But when we're bearish, we can really get refined and trade the tops in bear markets because they're predictable. They have a characteristic, they have a, a rhyme or reason as to why price should behave a specific way. Versus when you're in an extremely bullish market, how do you know? I don't know every single time that they won't go in there and intervene one more time and drive it one more time higher. That's why it's dangerous to try to pick tops in bull markets. But when the market is predisposed to go lower and you have all these types of characteristics in play, it's rather simple to anticipate where the market's going to run, create an extreme, and do a smart money reversal. But that easy perspective that I'm talking about, that comes with 30 years experience. You don't have 30 years experience. Some of you don't even have five years experience. So it's going to take a long time, and I mean long time, for you to be able to see smart money reversals as your entry points. 
Okay, but you don't need that. Anticipate it being there. And then once it does, the market breaks lower and any rally back up, look at the bodies here. Okay, that is what, that's consequent encroachment of the 60 minute fair value gap SIBI. That's your low risk short. We're trusting that we've already mohawked above here with these wicks. So now we're back down in here. So any, any attempt to trade in the middle point of this shaded area here, that could be your low risk short stop loss rate above here. What happens if you get stopped out? ICT, same thing. Wait for it to go lower. Leave the fair value gap low. And if it can touch the bottom of it again, I would use that as my entry. Stop would be break back above wherever the highest high was formed. Or the consequent encroachment of the wick if it formed a higher wick here. That's how I would use it. I would not be afraid to go back in. But that low risk is scary. For some of you, most, probably most of you, I'll be honest with you. You, you, you would never look to take the trade like that. But how many examples have I done this? I've done many examples of this in index futures, in commodities. I've done it in Forex pairs. You know, I, I've shown a plethora of examples of this, not just talking about like I'm doing here. I'm actually executing. I'm doing the entries. I'm annotating the chart as I'm doing it too. Many times with a one minute chart time frame. So I have to know what I'm doing to know not only what I intend to do trade wise and managing it with a stop loss, but also to outline it and type it out as the market's gyrating with no market replay all live. So the market breaks lower. And now what do we have? We're on the right side of the curve. That means this hypothetical invisible line where the market trades up during buy side delivery trades into our target where we anticipate the likelihood of a reversal. If the market starts to reverse, then we use the highest high that it forms. To the left of that is what? The buy side of the curve. That means everything leading to buy side delivery. Now on the left side is what? The sell side of the curve. That means we're in sell side delivery. What is sell side delivery going to be aiming for? The original consolidation low. Why? Because it wants to reprice under the original accumulation for sell-side liquidity, the stops that are resting below here. For traders that rode this up, they're married to the idea it's going to the moon, Bitcoin 100,000, that type of mentality. Eventually, it drops and goes attacks them. Okay? So we went above the buy side here to a specific price point. We have a breaker. High, low, higher high, body staying inside of the PD array, on the 60 minute. So it's indicating everything is there for this to start dropping. Basically that low is taken out right there. What does it create? Very high gap between this candles low, that candles high. That could be a trade in itself, but this is a breaker. So how far is it going to go back up into it right there? So your bearish breaker, that is your first stage distribution. So, you want to wait for the smart run reversal. You want to see a low risk short. Does it show a willingness to want to run away? Wonderful. That's tape reading. Now you have a fair value gap and you have a breaker. Trades up into it. Go short. That's your first stage distribution. Does it break lower? Yes, it does. Then it does what? It trades back to where we had buy side outlined. Support resistance folks are going to see that as what? Remember that relative equal high that was a little bit higher than this one to the left? They're going to see that as a break of resistance turn support. That stuff does not work. Okay. It does not work. You have to understand what price is going to do, why it's going to do it. What's the present narrative and where's the liquidity or inefficiency is going to really draw to. You can't just simply look at hypothetical imaginary lines that are horizontal or diagonal for goodness sake. When you call it trend line, I mean, all that stuff is mythology. It doesn't work. It doesn't hold up. So you have to know what price is trying to do, how it gravitates, and very specific, precise elements to price action. The market rallies up here into a bearish order block, which is the up close candle here. It trades into it, digs into half of the body right there. That's mean threshold. So that bearish order block is your second stage redistribution. This is going to be the fastest elevator ride of the move going down. Now, it doesn't mean it won't be a, you know, a, a sharp drop, consolidate, sharp drop, consolidate, sharp drop. That, it, it can do that. 
but this is the one you want to be entered on. Because if usually if you miss this one, you're probably going to be chasing price. Now, what happens if you don't see this as your low risk short and you see this as your low risk short? Where I had the first stage distribution. Is that wrong? No. Based on your present understanding, you're going to see it probably as this is the first stage of distribution to get short. And the smart money reversal was up here. Wonderful. You don't see a low risk short here in the middle of that PD array. That's okay. That's experience. I understand that you're not going to see everything that I've seen and I'm making allowances for that while I'm teaching it. So you might see this as your, your, your low risk sell or short. And then this is your first stage distribution. So where would the second stage distribution be or redistribution be? And it's, in other words, instead of saying this one is your second stage redistribution, which means it's going to be the highest degree of speed, magnitude, and impulsiveness to go lower quicker. If it's not this one, and you've classified that as your first stage distribution, and you're surprised with a sudden drop, and you're going to be standing there like a deer in headlights thinking, what am I supposed to do? This is going way faster than I thought it was. You're going to be dazzled because you're on side, and it's probably going to scare you to get out of the trade. And if you've never been trading with real money, you're going to experience that. Okay, and It's a weird paradigm, but you have to press into that. If you notice here, I've said that the buy side of the curve used in reverse in the sell side of the curve, meaning what? This down close candle is a bullish order block. So while we were going up, when it drops back down into this, it should be offering what? Support. So when we get to the other side of the curve, which is to the right of this imaginary line, which is divided by the highest high, where we anticipate, anticipate seeing the market reverse, on the right side of the curve, that's the sell side. So anything on the right side of the curve that was offered as support or as a discount array needs to start acting as what? A premium array or resistance. What's the low of that candle? Draw it through. Where's the body stopping? It's respecting it, isn't it? It's not just simply that bearish order block. It's not as simple as you want to think it is, folks. Everybody out there trying to teach order block theory, you have no idea what you're doing. That's why I'm writing the books. You have no idea. You've only been introduced to the idea. You're trying to use things that you're making up as you go along. We break lower. Same thing here. Buy side of the curve used in reverse on the sell side of the curve. Meaning what? This down close candle, what was it? A bull shoulder block on the buy side of the curve. But now we're on the left side of the curve where everything should be going lower. So what is going on here? The market's trading right back up to the butt end of that body. Boom. That would be your second stage redistribution. If you looked at that as first stage and this is the low risk short, smart money reversal, and you didn't classify anything low risk, that would be your second stage redistribution. For me, that would be a pyramiding entry. So I would have even more going short. And then we drop down into original consolidation. 80% of the trade would come off. And I would see, do we have the ability to get any deeper? And we can see it goes lower, deep retracement, and finally lower in here. So for the folks that want to know, this entire presentation was under the discussion of the British pound versus US dollar forex pair. All of these things here, folks, this occurs on every asset class. It's there all the time. Now, one of the wonderful elements that's not been discussed so far, but I mentioned in the briefing in the beginning of the discussion, is when everything with price is in agreement with time. Because time sets the stage. Then price does the act of precision. So it's time and price. Look what's occurring here. On the 31st, we have consolidation. We lead the consolidation, come back in, return to original consolidation. When does that occur? London open. Rallies up. Right in here, we have an order block. Right there. And then we have what? It rips into the buy side. Trading up into New York open. 7 o'clock in the morning. There's your market reversal profile. Part of a market maker sell model, time and price.
Everything that was illustrated over here, now look what we're at. We're inside of the New York Open kill zone. We have a breaker. We have a bearish order block. All within what? The New York Open kill zone. This is also optimal trade entry. Right there. This right here is model 2022. Buy side taken, shift in market structure, fair value gap, go short. That's model 2022. Ooh. This right here, trading up into that, that is the 7 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the morning, New York Open Kill Zone, silver bullet. Man, how many silver bullets? I got a whole rack of silver bullets. <laughs> Fair value gaps are always forming, folks. You have to understand what the narrative is in play for that session or that operating time that you're using for your trading day. I'm using times of the day that have high intakes of volume where order flow is increasing. It's rapid. There's a lot of interest getting in the marketplace. So you frame what you want to trade. You want to trade as little as an hour a day? Okay, I've already told you that. You want to trade a full kill zone, two hours? Three hours? Okay, I've told you that too. I can't trade New York. i got to trade London. Okay, I, to I told you how to trade that. All these things are there. Now, what did I teach you about the trading day in terms of the opposite and the range? If the whole idea was to run up, have a market reversal profile, and we have a market maker sell model here, this drop down below these relative equal lows here, what time can it arrive? When can it arrive at the target of reaching below that? London close, 10 o'clock to noon, New York local time. 10 o'clock to noon. Friends and neighbors, that's not random. That's all part of the things I've talked about all throughout the teachings of this entire YouTube channel. You have to know more than just a couple things that do the market maker sell model and buy models. So I've been... Very honored to be your mentor here. I've been honored to be a conduit to share all these things that I've collected and authored over the last 30 years. It's been a wonderful experience. I've been touched by so many of you as students. I have been moved to tears for some of you with all the uh, adoration and respect you've shown to me, and I'm so thankful for that. But like all things, all good things must come to an end. And I am married to a woman that demands more of my personal time. And social media and mentoring has taken a great deal of that. So I want you all to know that it has been a pleasure to be able to be in this seat as a teacher, as a, a role model for learning how to trade and read price action. I want you all to know that none of the content on this YouTube channel or my Twitter will be deleted None of it will be augmented, and I wish you all nothing but success with it. Until I talk to you next time, good luck and good trading.